Nigeria's industrial manufacturing measured by what you call the Purchasing Managers Index for December was a very sweet one. 2.2% growth in the numbers, reading 602 according to the independent data by FBN Quest. We got the data from the Central Bank of Nigeria just as we finished last year, uh, just about a, week, a few days ago, and that was also very positive reading, 61.1, heading to the north, much stronger than expected. Then FBN Quest Independent Data comes today confirming that Central Bank numbers, this independent uh, 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 PMI basket, which is, of course, a bit smaller, than those of the central bank, which is a bit more broad, about 16 subsectors in that survey. Uh, FBN Quest uh, reading, PMI reading was 60.2. Adimo Quest is here from Financial Derivatives Company, a member of the economic think tank, to uh, walk us through the big stories for consumers as we get the new year started. Good morning. It's good to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, uh, get a better year together. Shall we? Yes, that's yes. That's on the consumer space, these are big stories. Brent misbehaved or was volatile all through the long holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, make us smile, sometimes make us uh, cry, but it looks like we are here to a new price level, as it were. External reserves finished the year a little bit sluggish. We were down about 10%. What else is burning <laughs> this morning? I, I don't, I'm not too much, I don't like the burning, but well, if it burns well, it's okay. Well, um... The malaise that ended in the oil market that ended in 2018 has continued into 2019. Brent is still hovering about $53 per barrel, $54 per barrel, which is quite weak for a, an exporter like Nigeria. I think the U.S. Energy Information Administration forecasts the Brent, Brent price to average $62 per barrel in 2019, which, is, which will be below the average of $71 in 2018. I think that would be, would be unfortunate for Nigeria because that certainly means that all revenue would, would suffer. But in the short term, I think there are a number of risk factors that could influence the prices. I think you alluded to Donald Trump asking in the fact that oil prices had fallen down and that was solely down to him. I yeah, think that because he would... made some phone calls and he says, natural gas prices should. Uh, well... It's, it's, it's still neither here nor there. Yes, I believe. But, but there are a lot of issues with the oil producers and what is coming up. Iraq is in the news this morning. Uh, Saudi Arabia is also in the news, mm -hmm. as well as Russia. What are the big stories uh, along this oil producers? Well, I think... Supply? Demand. Yes, supply. Contrary to the OPEC agreement, which states that as at October 2018, producers should start cutting production, but... What we found out is that November and December, OPEC production, OPEC production rules. So that is what is contributing to this downturn in oil prices now. And also, we also have a concerns of China. Will China's, economy, will China's economy, will it continue to slow in 2019? The, the numbers from, from December PMI, our factory numbers from China is not encouraging at all. Yes, indeed. Uh, perhaps I think that's what is upsetting all, all, trade, all traders right now looking at, because if China is powering low, Yes. And uh, the numbers also out of a number of European countries in terms of PMI are not looking good at all. Yes, indeed. So that is just it's contributing to this, this fear that 2019 will be a very torrid year for, 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 for the global economy. Mm. <clears throat> I think another interesting item on our list is there's this post-Christmas effect on commodities. Mm. We're seeing key, key domestic commodities decline, commodities like rice, beans, tomatoes, and pepper decline. I think what is typical in most Nigerian homes is that in the first week of December, second week of December, you buy in bulk to cater to the number of friends and families that are going to come to your house to visit you during the Christmas period. So what usually happens is that at the end of this festive period, there's usually a lot of leftover in your house that would last till the end of January. So there's no reason to go to the market to buy buy those commodities again. So traders are aware of this dynamic and would drop their prices low. So this is, this would, this is pleasing to the consumer. So we find out that... It's a time to make some, some quick purchases yes. before kids get back to school. Yes. I think that will be from Monday. Yes, indeed. Yes. So rice, the 50 kg bag of rice has fallen from 15,500 now to 15,000 bag. We also have perishables like tomatoes and pepper falling to 6,500 naira and 5,000 naira respectively. So that would be pleasing for the consumers. 
I think another point I'd like to talk about is wheat farmers. Wheat farmers are seeking government intervention for price stability. 2018 was a very torrid year for Nigerian wheat farmers. Wheat farmers, domestic wheat farmers declined to about, domestic wheat declined to about 13,000 naira per kilogram from 14,500 naira per kilogram. The challenge here is that at 13,000 naira, wheat farmers are making losses and therefore they are reluctant to sell to, to the millers. What's the problem with wheat production uh, with basically in the north? Yes. Part of it in the northeast. Uh, yes. The entire northeast, extreme northeast of of Borno State is almost out of wheat production as we speak yes, because see, of the insurgency. You see farmers displaced, they lose their, their, their source of livelihood. So there's a very big problem. And wheat farmers, are, so this, this, this quagmire has driven wheat farmers to implore the government to provide some sort of minimum price to establish minimum some price sort levels, of minimum floor price, price levels. Yes. Okay, yes. so for the off-takers. Yes, for the mm. off-takers. But the risk here is that this would just increase the price of, of wheat and that would provide another incentive to import, to procure imported wheat. Mm. Mm. So it's a very challenging, complex situation. But I think... Perhaps, we, alternatively, perhaps the government can, can, can provide some bridge there for the, for the, for the farmers by is. some way of, well, I don't want to go the way of subsidy. Folks out there won't like that, but... Uh, Something like a subsidy for the, for the wheat farmers. I think a, a way of subsidizing it, yes. subsidizing their production Akin in a manner of speaking. Yes. To rice, yes. What is happening to yes. rice? Yes. 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 Because I think if there is a minimum price, because the similar thing happened in Tanzania with cashew crops. Really? Cashew crops fell, were, fell to a very low price. Farmers couldn't sell their products. So the government came in, established a minimum price, and farmer, tr traders still couldn't buy buy cash off of their farms because the price was too high. Mm. So the government ended up swooping in, purchase, put, procuring those, those cashew products from the farmers, and they couldn't still offload those, those products. So they ended up having an expensive bulk of cashew nuts without, with no buyers. So I think the most sustainable solution, like you said, is to provide a subsidy for the wheat farmers, like what is happening in the rice, rice market. Mm. Okay, so uh, talk to us a bit about the, uh, the PMI for December. Uh, this FBN quest independent data stream uh, just seemed to corroborate the central bank uh, data that of, uh, of just about a week ago that our PMI for December was 61.1. This was 60.1. Uh, smaller basket, but again, seems to train in the same, pos um, the same positive trajectory for our purchasing uh, managers. Yes, PMI went up. According to FBN Quest, our PMI went up 2.2% to 60.2 in December. This is very good news. More importantly, the employment index, which has been underwater for a quite, quite a number of months, also improved to, to 55 in positive territory. And I think the report pointed out that the, F, the FG has earmarked for two billion for to develop various special economic zones across the country. I think this will provide a very significant flip for the, for the manufacturing sector if that comes into fruition. So 20, 2019 should be a very good year for the manufacturing sector, hopefully. Mm. Okay, well, so I, I was seeing a bit of, a, of a, a impact of, of the backlog of policies by the central bank mm. in terms of uh, FX allocations, steady FX allocations to uh, wholesale and, mm. and, and retail manufacturers, including the SMEs and, and others. And again, making sure that we increase local production with those ban on 41 items, sorry, 41 plus one, <laughs> which is now 42, <laughs> with fertilizer, which yes. was added yes. late last year. So we, we, we're very happy that we have uh, uh, um, uh, Egina in, in the box right now. That's good news. Yes, certainly. This should rise, should boost our production by about 10%. But the challenge that's, is... That's that, one good news. That's the goodies. Yes, the challenge is that under the OPEC agreement, our production is capped at 1.7. So we risk, if we raise our production to 2.1, we risk contravening the agreement and being in OPEC's bad books. So, so both the NNPC chief and the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources should be thinking of what to tell OPEC at the next meeting. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> before they say, hey, folks, get in here, yes. sit down, have a haircut with the rest of us as far as production is concerned. We need this Agena, uh, 170,000 to 200,000 barrels per day. We need it very sorely, uh, at least to boost yes. our outlook for 2019. Yes. But we need to be 
uh, to start preparing our press statement for OPEC. Uh, to, to, to tell them when the first meeting true. comes up yeah. as to, uh, well, we're not yet ready, uh, yet let us just enjoy this, as it were, not with prices uh, behaving very uh, sluggishly at around the $50 a barrel. So what else is there uh, to, to, to make my day yes, in, at, at the global agri-market? I'm more interested in the agri-commodities, and we talked about wheat there earlier. If we're not doing much locally, that means we'll have to do something Something has to come in extent. Like you talk about uh, increasing our imports, and which is not going to be good music to the to the ears of the folks at the central bank. Yes, wheat. What compounds this situation is that the wheat global wheat prices. The outlook is very bearish. Wheat prices are forecast to decline further in 2019. I think grains in general will be very are very contingent on this. What is happening between the U.S. and China? The I think we're on about. 60 more days till the end of the truce. And it is very uncertain whether how that situation would play out. I think the US is demanding China to implement more impactful reforms in their manufacturing sector and maybe perhaps their currency, which I believe the Chinese would be reluctant to do. So there are very two distant positions. So to how did they converge? That would be very difficult. Would so, be very difficult. US yeah. farmers are already feeling the impact yes. of, of, uh, of, of this trade war because uh, they already, the government also owing them some of our standing, some subsidies and payment for this period, and they're not getting that. So they're feeling the pinch already. And if U.S. farmers are feeling the pinch, I'm not sure it's going to take long before some of what we import <laughs> from, yes. as, as whatever, as whether sweet corn or whatever, yes. start getting impacted yes. by these two elephants yes, uh, yes, fighting yes, and yes. threshing the rest of us. Yes, that's true. So, but... On the well, so what are we doing uh, locally here if we look at uh, perhaps cocoa production in West Africa, if we can avoid some of the imported tin uh, products? Let's consume what we have. So yes. what was about the cocoa here? Cocoa, cocoa is a very good story there. Cocoa is, is, although the prices are at a very moderate level now, they are still a focus to increase in 2016, on in 2019, I'm sorry, on the back of increased demand for chocolates across the developed economy. So... Although this is the main crop season, we should expect West African production. And just production is also forecast to increase in 2019, but that shouldn't impact the price level too much, I believe. I think demand would, would make up for that increase in supply. Mm. Very interesting. Um, anything else there that you think should I think, grab our attention? Yes, uh, I think another point, which is on another goodies, which is, on our, which is not on our list, is the fact that this December 2018, we did not see any forecast the first time in a long period. Oh, yeah. That's, that's period. good news. So yeah, that's, 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 yes, that was good news. We just escaped it <laughs> yes. by whiskers between yes. the uh, petrol importers who were asking mm. for subsidy payment and the Nigeria Labour yes. Congress. We were able to give us uh, a lot of political maneuverings. Thank you, folks, uh, whoever, all those who made it possible <laughs> for folks to, uh, uh, to travel uh, here and there. And some are just uh, returning back, uh, back to the city. Mm -hmm. And those who came to Lagos for Christmas and year and are just going back. Everyone was having a very uh, nice time, as it were. So there was no major shock mm -hmm. to petrol product supply. So thank you, guys, at the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, NMPC, and everyone else who were behind the curtains or behind the closed doors made that uh, happen. But we, we didn't say thank you. We should say thank you to them. And thank, thank you, too, for okay. coming. Thank Adimo you Kwesa, a you. member of the Economic Think Tank at Financial Derivatives Company. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has its own focus policy uh, for 2019. What is it about? Uh, that's coming next after the break. You're watching Business Morning. Who's humming there? <laughs>